All right, it is July 20th. Today I was going um, thrifting and I managed to pick up this find. It is uh, RCA VTM 395. Um, very heavy unit. Um, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. For the most part, though, when it is heavier, normally it means how old it is, um, which is good. Uh, turned on in the store. Um, however, it did chew up my tape of Van Helsing. Right now, you can see here where I'm pointing to. Um, it did have audio levels, though. So as you're watching the movie, it'll actually show audio levels just like a stereo or speaker, um, which I thought was something that was really neat. Uh, this is in store. I put a Van Helsing tape inside of the store. And as you can see, it uh, it definitely chewed it up. Uh, this, this model was made around 1985, 1986 was when it started circulation. Um, Never taken a cover off a of VCR before, so taking the cover off was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, first things first, before you get into the innards, make sure you unplug your power cord. Um, so as you can see, um, there's a lot of corrosion on the motherboard. We're not going to address that today. That, that could, it, looking at it, it did only look like surface rust. It didn't look like any kind of corrosion was deep inside the board. Um, but you can see the tape was wound up on the spiel, on, on the spiel, on the spool, my apologies. And um, that's where it did get stuck. Uh, so as you can see, taking that apart, I did wind it back up. Um, never had a chewed up tape before, so this was good. The reason why I did buy this machine, even though it was uh, broken, was I've never had a machine actually chew up a tape. So it was good to kind of, I did want to see exactly what was going on and why these things do chew up tapes. Have watched a lot of videos of why they do chew up, so I do have my hypothesis already in place. But I did want to kind of try it out myself before I started making any assumptions. Uh, my finger there that I just spun, that was the drive head. That's what reads it. But uh, real quick, you have to just pull the tab on the side and wind the VH, uh, the actual tape back in. So again, you're going to demonstrate again. It goes in. Where I'm pointing to, um, just in front of the Van Helsing tape to the right side of the drive, a, a head comes out and grabs the tape. However, on the right-hand side there, you can see it does not allow it to um, come back um, and it's not spooling it out. So the tape is being fed out, but it's not allowing it to grab it and bring it around towards the head. Um, and that is what's causing it to, um, to spool out. Here you can see a better image of it. So you can see as the tape goes in, I haven't pressed play yet. So when I press play, pulls the tape right out. Okay, And then right there where I pointed to, that should actually feed it and should keep going. But as you can see, it starts to spool up there and it's not actually winding it down and around. That with it not winding it down and around is what's causing it to not uh, to not keep the tape going to the other reel. Um, so again, we'll take the tape back out. We'll have a quick peek at it. We'll unwind it, get it out of there. Yeah, get it stuck on the thing, obviously. Okay, so again, you see the little tab right there, push that little tab in, pull it up, and that's the only way it's going to uh, unwind. Once you unwind it all the way, I was using my finger for some parts, and then in some parts I did use a screwdriver. I do think come the future, I am going to uh, build myself an a winding screwdriver just to that has the same um, grab as the VCR does, just to make winding easier but that'll be a next step in the future. Uh, right here, this is the tensioner arm. So when you go forward or backwards um, for either play, fast forward or reverse, that is what uh, um, allocates which way you're going. And then right in here, already right away, we're about two minutes in, three minutes in sort of deal, already found the problem. Um, again, the older you get the VCR, um, they do become belt driven. Um, newer models are uh, normally just gears only. Um, so they don't have any wearable parts. This here right there is where the wearable part is. And that's more than likely why that's not spooling because it's not allowing it to spin another driver that allows it to grab the tape. Uh, not using the right tool here, but I did manage to get this cover off. This is common on all VCRs. You do see this. This will be, uh, this is your, your VCR head cover. This is what guides the tape in and then allows it to go down. Um, it does have one ground wire on it. I did look online to see if I could get a wiring schematic as to why and what that ground wire does. Fortunately, not able to. There is two tabs that are inside of the VCR that do look like they ground out when 
the VCR goes in and it pushes them up onto the, the head cover, but could not find a 100% reasoning behind it. You'll see me later on in the video tinker with the loose wire to try and see if, if I could figure it out. Unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to. Uh, flip the machine over. We're going to take the back cover off. This is where you normally would see if it is belt driven. Most of the belts will be in the, on the back of the unit. Um, once I get this cover off, again, I did find the right tool eventually with that green screwdriver. So taking that off, you can see um, there is two belts there. And there also is one blue belt on that black pulley that is next to the white pulley on the very bottom. That one I'm fiddling with right now. And that one there is the belt is broken as well. So we have two broken belts. Um, as I'm trying to have a look into it, just fiddling and tinkering sort of deal. Again, I did look for a repair manual and something to kind of give me a better glimpse of what's inside of it. But unfortunately, nothing was found. There was one that I could purchase, um, but I felt with the unit already being broken, I didn't want to purchase something if parts weren't available. Um, I did look for the belts online. The belts are around twenty to thirty dollars, and they're sh and that's U.S. and they are shipped from the states. So that ends up being approximately fifty dollars, fifty to sixty dollars Canadian to get this VCR working. And again, I can buy a working one for five dollars from the thrift store. So we're not going to get this one going later on. Right here, you can see I'm pointing out this is the VCR head. This is what actually reads. It comes in two, four, six, or eight heads. What you're looking for is two little, little, little slits on the bottom. This one only is a two head, so there's only two slits on the very bottom where those lines are. Those two is what exactly reads the tape. You may also notice that it is, it doesn't look flat inside. It's at an angle. The reason for why it's at an angle is that's just how the tape is done. And you can fit more on tape being it at an angle like that. Um, all VCRs are at an angle like that. If I can find a picture eventually of what it looks like, what to see on the tape when it does record, that will um, kind of give you a better picture or idea of what it looks like. But the two head, the two, this is a two head machine. So again, as I'm showing you on the right hand side that what I just touched there, that was your fast forward or your play function um, turntable head. Um, I do not know, know the exact technical term of that. I will find that out for my next one I do. But that grabs in there. What the main thing I was trying to do here, and I spent a lot of time trying to do, is I want to be able to get the VCR to press play, engage the head, and move all its innards without a tape inside. So I can see kind of exactly what's going on underneath the tape. Because unfortunately, with the tape in, you're not able to see the... Um, tensioner move or spin or what exactly moves the tensioner mechanically there is gears there and i do see that um but i can't get it to play um i did eventually find out by pushing two tabs and eventually pushing it forwards with enough force i do i am able to engage the driver to like there is a, a vhs inside however i couldn't get it to stay down i did look to try and see if there was something else that causes it to stay down but again can't, couldn't find anything that engages it to stay down at the same time. Um, there is a little, it looks like almost like a photo diode right above the tensioner, and there's a hole in the actual tape itself that I thought maybe that when that gets covered, it'll actually show that the tape is inside of the player, but covering it, it didn't, um, it didn't assist me at all, give me any hand sort of deal. Um, again, just more tinkering and stuff like that. This is what I was like enjoying the most um you can buy you know what i mean you can go vcr to vcr and they can show you tips and tricks like that but without experience going from each one every single vcr is different just like a car you need to work on it and kind of figure it out on your own and and do the process on your own that's to me is the best way to learn how to do this um i won't be buying the belts as um as i said this will be just probably put downstairs in storage and use for innards on different models, different RCA models that I do have. Um, if I do eventually get the belts or I win the lottery, 100% uh, the belts will be ordered. Because of the audio levels, I really like this machine, but I wasn't able to find anything that uh, that made it worthwhile to, uh, to keep. Um, in the end, uh, I put it back together. And then as you can see, um, I tape it up and label it to go back down into storage. Um, so some things that I do need to look ahead for the future, um, I am gonna look at a winding tool 
Um, my next blog will be more on a cleaning procedure. Um, because I picked this up today, this morning, uh, at WasteWise in Georgetown, I did want to right away try it out. Um, and that's why I opted to do this one instead of other ones. Um, but that's it for today. Hopefully, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.